today, Intel's next-gen GPU is spotted. You'll have to throw out your GPU and motherboard for this. Intel's getting sued, and NVIDIA's monster CPU beats AMD and Intel. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, it looks like Intel's next-gen Battlemage GPUs have been spotted. According to a new report from Hardware Lux, they got a chance to tour Intel's facilities in Malaysia. During their tour, they were able to look in Intel's Failure Analysis Lab, and it's there that they saw chips from Intel's next-gen Battlemage. According to the report, they were labeled BMG G10. Unfortunately, they weren't able to photograph the chips, but they were clearly there. Either way, this confirms that Intel's next-gen GPUs are already in their labs being tested. Not only that, but this actually confirms a leak by Red Gaming Tech from earlier this year. The leak was of this roadmap, where you can see it mentions BMG G10. According to the roadmap, they're targeting under 225 watt power consumption for the G10 and 150 watts for a BMG G21. BMG is obviously for Battlemage, and you can see that here as well. It also shows that they're set to launch in Q2 of next year, so not too far off. All I'm hoping for is that they can compete with the higher end GPUs with their next-gen cards. Next up for today, a brand new standard looks to be coming that means you need a new GPU and motherboard to use it. But before I get to that, it's time to get pumped because Micro Center has announced yet another store opening. The company only just recently opened their new Indianapolis store, and their next store is officially coming to Charlotte, North Carolina in 2025. Of course, if you haven't already been to a Micro Center, you've got to check them out. And not just because they sponsored today's video, but because they're basically a PC gamers heaven. For starters, they have every PC part you could ever want for a build. Whether it's a PC case you've been looking for, a motherboard, CPU, GPU, or even custom water cooling parts. And they're all in an actual store you can visit so you can see exactly what you're buying. It's why I went there for my first ever PC build. To top it off, they're offering my viewers who are first time buyers a coupon for $25 off any CPU, whether it's Intel or AMD. So there's no reason not to check them out. Just click on my link in the description below to get yours today. Now back to the story. This one comes from official documentation that was just leaked by Momoma underscore US on Twitter. And it's of a new connection standard that's a pretty wild departure from what we're used to. As you can see, the socket is in the motherboard, similar to a PCI Express slot, instead of coming from your PSU to the GPU. This would definitely be better for aesthetics because it would mean you don't have power cables coming from your card. Not only that, but while it doesn't give an exact figure, the documents claim that it can offer more than 600 watts, which is already necessary given the 4090 can go over that now. The connector itself comes with 16 pins for power delivery and 12 for communication between the board and GPU. It's right in line with the PCI Express slot as well, but because it requires something new on your motherboard and GPU, you'll need both the new GPU and board to use it. And I will say that I don't see how they could use an adapter. That's obviously an issue, but there is good news. The connector is ultimately a modified HPC CE power connector, which is what a ton of servers use today. So it's a tried and true connector that should be able to avoid the issues seen with that 16 pin connector. Of course, I would then wonder about where it gets the power. In Asus's model, they have 8 pin connectors and the 16 pin, so it could just be moving that 16 pin connector to the back. So far, we've already seen ASUS announce products for it, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see others begin to adopt it, or at least offer it as an option. Next up, Intel looks to be getting sued thanks to their most recent vulnerability. That's right, if you saw my video on that, you know that it's yet another side channel exploit that can allow a hacker access to important information. And if you like to learn ways of keeping your hardware safe, make sure you subscribe to GamerMeld. Now, Intel did release a mitigation for it, but according to Intel themselves, it can mean a performance loss of as much as 50%. And it's because of that, the law firm Bathy Dunn LLP is pursuing a class action lawsuit against Intel. Currently, they're still gathering interest for the lawsuit, but the goal is to force Intel to compensate consumers for, quote, the loss of value, reduced performance, security issues, and other damages stemming from the downfall vulnerability. Now, I will say that in one way, it does make sense. 
seconds. You pay for a CPU with the understanding that it gets X performance, but you're now having to decide between security or a massive loss in that performance. The issue is that this could be a Pandora's box that opens up lawsuits for any and all bugs in software and hardware, and this would literally destroy the entire electronics business. And lastly for today, while AMD and Intel have been dominating the server space for years with their x86 architecture, Nvidia's first real CPU apparently beats them both. The story comes from a brand new post by Nvidia, where they shared new benchmarks for their upcoming Nvidia Gray CPU. For those who don't know, their Gray CPU is an ARM-based part that comes with up to 144 cores, 117 megabytes of L3 cache, and support for up to 960 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory. When it comes to those benchmarks in dual configuration, you can see that NVIDIA shows their gray CPU beats both Intel and AMD in multiple benchmarks, getting up to as much as 40% faster performance. Then when comparing the two in a full data center environment, they claim up to 2.5 times the performance. Now I will say that they're comparing it to AMD's best Genoa chips, which only get up to 96 cores apiece. But keep in mind that their Epic Bergamo is made for very specific workloads so it makes sense they didn't use it. Plus, the two Genoa chips have power draw of 640 watts, with their Gray CPU running at 500. Ultimately, if these are right, Nvidia's Gray CPU is looking seriously impressive. So while that does it for today, do you think Intel getting sued is the right move? And what do you think of Nvidia's new CPU? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to grab $25 off your CPU with Micro Center in the description below. And as always, have a great day.